see why the, you, you see why the Chinese are like they're happy they are not in China because you see the tapes were all covered with icky, disgusting mud. Now, now, folks, you're lucky this photo's not scratch and sniff. I mean, you know. <laughs> but see, folks, the good thing was, was this. Because these tapes were older and not used anymore and could only be played on certain 24-track machines. In fact, this is one of the remaining 24-track machines here in... Um, uh, two left in North America. Oh, two left in North America. Thank you. Here. Yes, yeah, it's the only one remaining. <laughs> but because these are on these older tapes, Harmony Gold could spend the money to actually remaster them and bring them back up to high production quality. So now they are preserved forever. Yeah! Yes. So, to give you an idea, I'm going to talk about this a little bit, because this is part of the reason why it's been delayed, is because uh, this is a great photo, too. Notice the sort of thin tape here? This thin tape is what we use to make the 20th anniversary soundtrack. Okay, that's the tapes we use to make the 20th anniversary soundtrack, and, and I think Tommy, you can, might, or Steve, you might be able to add a little more to this. It gives it sort of a flat stereo sound. Unlike the new ones, which is the 24 track tape, note how much more data it can store. Okay? It actually has every single, single instrument uh, individually broken out so that we can rebalance all the instruments individually. Uh, yeah. And what you can do is, too, is that we can take out the instruments, too. So if you want to hear Lancer, our Yellow Dancer, sing a cappella, you can do that. If you want to hear the guitar, you can do that. If you want to hear the drums, you can do that. We can now make instrumental versions of the songs. And more importantly, too, as you know, on, on the 20th anniversary soundtrack, some of the song qualities or, or track qualities aren't quite as good as they should be. With this, they're all going to be amazing quality, folks. So what's going on with the soundtrack? Here's the deal. All the music's going to be digitally remastered. And more importantly, it'll be like a three-disc set. That's how much music we've found. New music, a lot of music you haven't been, you've heard of it, but you, it hasn't been released. We're finally going to be able to release it. Probably one of the best CD soundtrack releases of Baroque music ever. We apologize for the delay, folks, but believe me, it is worth it. This is what happened. Everything kept on coming. We kept on adding more and more and more, and we realized, my God, there's so much here to release it the right way so you, the fans, get the best value for your money, particularly in this tough economy. That's what we want to do. Let's delay it. Let's do it right so you guys get the best value for your money. So let's talk about the Robotech documentary. Last year, I know some of you were here, and we uh, screened the first clip of the Robotech documentary. But let's go into a little bit of the history about it. So a lot of people have been sort of asking some questions. Well, well how did this all come about? Back in 2009, Carl would come into our office and he'd sit down and talk with us. He'd start telling these great stories about Robotech. We'd ask him questions like, what happened with the Sentinels? What happened with Robotech, the movie, The Untold Story? What happened on the original Robotech series? He would tell these amazing, amazing, amazing stories. We all said to him, you know, Carl, there's got to be a way you got to sit here and talk to like, the fans and tell these fans these stories because the fans need to hear this stuff too. <laughs> so we kicked around some ideas and Carl said, look, why don't we take like a minute or we'll call it a Robotech Minute, take some aspect of the franchise, we'll put it up online and tell this whatever story we want to do for the 20th anniversary. Well, an agreement was reached, but as we all know, Carl passed away. So Harmony Gold decided, well, let's take this Robotech Minute idea and expand it out into an actual Robotech documentary. We took one of our offices that weren't being used inside the Harmony Gold building and converted it into a soundstage. We then brought in almost the entire cast to sit down and talk about Robotech, how it was produced, how it was created, what was it like working on the show. And then we also brought in some other people too, some other people in the anime industry who worked with Carl, particularly in those early years, like in, in, in the late 80s, as he was building Streamline, to talk about Robotech's legacy as well. Now folks, we're going to show you the first clip of the documentary, like the animated feature clip I just showed you previously. I need you to turn off all your cameras. You like that? Yeah. You want to see another clip? Yeah. Trust me, and believe me, this is only a fraction of what the documentary is. But uh, it's worth about 10 minutes. Once again, all cameras, all recording devices. I want to thank the producer and director behind this was Keith Maxwell, who did the Rope to Shot Chronicles documentary back in 2006 for us. As you can see, he's done a marvelous job. And folks, as I said before, what, you, what we have shown you is only a mere fraction of what the documentary has in store. It's, good. It, it, it's, it's a great piece. And even there, there's other things that we even make in the documentary, which are very cool as well. Now, you've all seen this, obviously. You all like it, I hope. <laughs> yes. Now, you're all wondering, well, 
what's the status? What's going on here? Well, first off, let's get this right up. No, it's not in China. <laughs> but it is completed and ready for release. No, not in China, but also for release here in North America. Yes. yes. Now you're all saying, okay, Kevin, it's completely ready for release, but you know, how is this going to get like distributed stuff? Well, folks, we're not ready to even talk about that yet, but we can say this. We expect to make some sort of distribution announcement before the end of 2011. So I promise you this, before December 31st, 2011, there will be some kind of distribution announcement. <laughs> Wait, actually, yeah, put, it, put your cameras up. Okay, hi, I'm Kevin McKeever, Marketing of Harmony Gold. We will, be, we will be making some kind of distribution announcement before the end of 2011. I promise you, before December 31st, 2011, there will be some kind of distribution announcement. I won't say what it is, but folks, it's, it's very different. It will be a very interesting six months, I promise you that. So, that's what we have for right now. That's what's going on in the Robotech franchise, but folks, guess what? We're not done yet, because folks, I want to hear and we want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear your questions, and ladies and gentlemen, yes, we have brought back the mystery box. Yeah. All right, folks, the mystery box has been joined by, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the mystery bag. Yes. So if my convention assistant Fuzzy is around somewhere, he can hopefully, there he is. All right, who wants to win some prizes? Sir, you have your, you've had your hand up. You have the glasses and hat. Yes, sir. Twenty fifth. There is more than half. What would be the cost of the US to apologize to the original developers of Spectrum across the US for us so that we can get across frontier here in the United States? To, um, I, I'm sorry. Um, the cost of the US to localize across frontier. Oh, localize to, uh, I guess, uh, adapt it. Yeah, adapt well, it. Well, maybe a this is actually something we've uh, been asked for the last few years, um, and this is just to get you acquainted. You know, you can find out about this online. You know, Wikipedia or Google it. Is that the original two companies that had uh, produced uh, the Macross series had gotten into some kind of uh, uh, legal battle, and this was over uh, the licensing related to Macross, the commercial rights related to Macross. And as far as I know, uh, the rights in Japan have to some extent, I guess, um, have gone into litigation and some of that has been resolved in court, but all of the details haven't been worked out yet uh, from what we understand. The thing is, when something is worked out, when all is settled and done, we're, we're happy to you know, work with whomever uh, to see you know, more Macross get into the United States. I mean, one of the things we did work out in recent years is we slowly started to work out licensing for Macross, Do You Remember Love, to at least get some of those toys into the United States. So we're taking baby steps on that. Uh, uh, the, the movie itself, okay, that one is even more complicated because the rights for that are split between Tatsunoko, Big West, and Toho. So it's, uh, there you have even more partners in that one. So, uh, you know, it, it's just whenever it can be worked out. Actually, sir, the black in the back. Yes, yeah, so I'm a big fan of Robotech, obviously. I'm a big fan of music in general. I'm a huge fan of Robotech music. I'm really excited about the prospects for the new soundtrack. I personally would rather wait another six months or a year and get the mega load you guys are talking about. It's really awesome and exciting. Well, we can do a demo of the uh, some of the new tracks uh, after the Q&A, too. Awesome. Oh, but you're talking about, you know, now you have the, in the individual instruments. You're maybe remixing them, whatever you're doing. Is it possible that you can release the individual stems of the music so the fans can remix the stuff, maybe with the soundtrack or if it's a separate release. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, by the way, both of you gentlemen, don't forget, uh, since you both asked very good questions, you are entitled to something. Oh, they're getting stuff from the mystery oh, okay. box. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mystery box is active. Right. <laughs> hey, uh, well, Steve, I, Steve, actually, one thing. Um, you remember uh, the resolution that we're actually uh, mastering uh, stuff at now at this point? Actually, all the, uh, and we'll go into more detail about this after the Q&A, but uh, all the stuff we're getting, we had it digitized from the tapes at 24-bit uh, instead of 16-bit, so that when we do all the filtering, the noise filtering, and uh, 
you know, moving the instruments around in space just so you get a stereo effect. Um, you know, it's done at higher than CD resolution so that it's extra clean when we put, you know, when we uh, uh, compress it down to CD resolution. But we'll go into that more afterwards. You, you're really going to like this stuff, believe me. Question. Question. Sir, over here. But um, the new movie, are you guys going to follow more of the Robotech storyline? Are you going to be following more of the Macross storyline? Or are you going to be following more of the Madcross storyline? Wait, wait, which, which movie? Uh, the live action. Live action, live action movie? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a Robotech movie. And so uh, that's what Warner Brothers licensed from us, is to tell a Robotech story. And so there's going to be elements that you're going to recognize, but um, it's going to fall more in line with the universe of Robotech. Specifically, yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, it, 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 you know, uh, it, just like any other live-action film you've seen, it's going to be a reboot. It's going to be updated to the times, but at the same time, it's going to be telling the core story of the Robotech universe. Specifically, yeah. Sir, in the, in the, in the beer. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. So, um, I wasn't here in the beginning, but um, is it going to be on Blu-ray? And is there going to be um? What will be on Blu-ray? The bundle set. I'm going to come out with the uh, extra footage stuff. The movie is going to be here. Wait, wait, which project? See, the Robotech franchise has grown so much. Right. You have to be specific in which project you're talking about now. I mean, uh, are you talking, are you, the, are you talking the, ser the Robotech series? Yes. Ah. One through, I can't remember. Oh, you're one through 85. One through 85. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'll be very frank with you guys. We're actually doing a lot of technology tests with uh, Robotech. Uh, one of the things uh, about Robotech is it wasn't shot 35 millimeter. It was shot very cheaply for television, and it was shot in 16 millimeter. And the one thing that we are discovering with 16 millimeter is the individual chemical grains on the film itself are bigger than uh, the pixels. Uh, I, you know, I'm not talking about the really expensive 16 millimeter that they, you know, shot Black Swan with, but I'm talking about stuff shot back then. And so when we blow it up, we're just making the film grain bigger. And so we're trying to see if at some point the technology catches up so that we can make Blu-ray look good. Yeah. Right. This is just so you know, this is one of the actual 16 millimeter that they come in. This is what actually Robotech comes from, quite literally. And it's like 16 millimeter. If you remember in junior high school? Yeah. You're, yeah. See? Yeah. It's. Yeah. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. All right. In the the, the in the in the Ben Dixon costume. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, mainly interviews uh, with the, the American uh, production cast. So uh, it's all the people who worked uh, here at Nigger in the United States. That's a good question. And since, you're, uh, since you've got the Kakazaki thing going here, you deserve a 1 of 1,000 Macross yeah. VF1A. Oh. All right, let's see it. See here in the center here in, in the back. How yeah. long will the documentary run? Like how many hours? Or... How many hours? <laughs> you want like how, how many hours do you want? <laughs> uh, we, we, we can't disclose exactly how long it is just yet um, because there's still distribution agreements that have to be worked out. So. Uh, we don't want to disclose how, that, that just yet, but trust me, it's as you've seen from these clips, it's really, really good. So you're really gonna like it. Thank so, you. so there you go. All right, actually, let's get you a prize here. There you go. All right. Over here, sir in the hat. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, we want more toys. Give us more toys from everything. Yes. 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 Uh, how are you both also? I know uh, currently, uh, the video game uh, rights, uh, they have actually been acquired by Warner Brothers Consumer Products. And so Warner Brothers is working on coordinating uh, those types of merchandising and licensing efforts with the live action film. And then lastly, uh, what do you guys think of that whole uh, 
uh, all the time. What are we? Uh, uh, actually, all uh, not just all day, uh, all night. We are literally working around the clock on a lot of these projects. It's a global franchise, so there's you're talking the entire robotic staff here. We have to cover the world. I cover the morning shift. <laughs> yeah, you know. So that's a good question, sir. So we get you a wall scroll. So there you go. All right. Let's see over here. I see right here. You can throw the hat. Yep. Gunplay. Oh, Gundam model type stuff. Um, modeling, sadly, has really contracted here in North America. Remember back in the 80s, at the Robotech models, they were, just, just, they were great. They were, but you know what? That market has really just shrunk down to a tiny, tiny niche. And there isn't a lot of interest in that. People, people want toys. I know. I don't believe me. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I still remember those Robotech models, and they were just <coughs> freaking awesome. But yeah, it's it's and the economy doesn't even makes it all. Yeah, they're probably stuck on a on a dock in China somewhere. Too. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really why Wonderfest exists in Japan. It's for little onesie twosie licenses by garage studios for stuff that most commercial manufacturers can't do low runs at that level. Yeah, so, actually, okay, over here, actually, way over here on the other side. Yes, she was here in the classes. Um, you got a question. Um, I don't know the Kinetic Battery Trade Sound Attack. Uh, is there a possibility that you guys might go like, a real life I do think I can well, you can buy it for a lot less than that, and you can rip it, but, uh... If you want to pay a hundred, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> We're accepting money after the panel, I mean, hey. <laughs> no, no the, 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 that's actually a really good valid point, is, um, you know, the, our older soundtracks, uh, such as the 20th anniversary, that came out uh, on the CD format. Our more recent ones, like Shadow Chronicles, did come out on iTunes, so, uh, yeah, uh, we'll look into that. Okay, let's see. In the corner, way in the back. You with the glasses, the Autobot guy. Yeah, um, you answered the question earlier, I think it was the first question. You said that the footage for the original show was shot, shot on 16 millimeters and it was um, low quality. I was wondering, what was the Sentinels filmed on? What, what's their footage on? Uh, that was shot in 16. Uh, the only, the only, uh, I'm sorry? Oh, uh, Going back to that question, uh, the only Robotech footage from the 80s that I know of that was shot in 35 was uh, the Megazone 23 portions of Robotech the movie. Yeah, so. All right, sir, you, you're standing up here, so I want to. You would have to be all the way up here. Okay, all right. This is, this is actually, I'm, I'm glad you asked this question. You have to understand how film financing works. I understand what you're saying. It's like you want to see a Robotech movie and you're willing to put up your money to see that. I, I really, believe me, I really appreciate that. There's just one problem preventing you from doing that. It's this thing called the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah. yeah. See, 